Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the sharpening features inside of Nick Collection. I'm working inside of Photoshop. This is a raw file. Now the image is opened up as a, as a smart object from Camera Raw. What I want to do is just to apply some filters, some Nick Collection filters to sharpen the image. If we go back into Camera Raw, I think you'll find that I actually turned down all the sharpening. So by default, the sharpening is usually at about 40. I turned it all the way down and we're going to be using the Nick Collection to do our raw sharpening. So we go to Nick Collection raw pre-sharpener. Now, as that opens up, I just want to mention that you can use Nick Software Collection in different software packages, GIMP, Lightroom, Photoshop. And I also want to mention if you want to get the Adobe Creative Cloud, there is currently a discount. I'll have a link in the description to the video where I discuss that. They've extended the time period. We're going to take a look at pre-sharpening, which is the sharpening that you do right at the beginning on a raw file. They do recommend you do this on raw files, not on JPEGs or DNGs. But I'm going to trust that you guys will break the rules and will bring in your JPEGs and do whatever the hell you want to do because you're rebels. The reason I say that is because I've had more success using this feature with uh, JPEGs and DNGs than with raw files. But let's take a look at how you're supposed to, to use it. It is very, very intuitive. So you've got the sharpening right at the top. You've got the area or edge sharpening. You've got an ISO control and you've got control points which are used throughout the, uh, the Nick collection. What we do is that we just basically play around with the settings until we get a nice sharpening happening inside the image. This sharpening hopefully you can see is horrible. So we will play around with these until we get something that looks nicer. And I'm going to trust that you guys will experiment a little bit just to get a feel of what is the correct thing to do. The amount of sharpening that we get here is very, very limited. And if you prefer to use your own raw sharpening inside, say, Camera Raw or Lightroom, then use that instead. The next sharpening we're going to look at is the output sharpener. Now to keep things realistic, I'm actually going to apply Define 2, which is the noise reduction. And I'm just going to hit OK once it's finished. Come on. We'll hit OK. It will do some noise reduction and that will keep things maybe a little bit more realistic. We can now go to our sharpening. We're going to go to the output sharpener. This is where the donkey work is done. This is where the heavy lifting is done. When you open up, it will already be applying some sharpening because of this setting up here. So you can reduce the adaptive sharpening if you want to. I prefer to kind of reduce this a little bit and play around with the output sharpening down here. It all depends on the image and the camera. So with this one, I'm going to increase the output sharpening. Structure is a lot of fun. Sometimes it creates really amazing effects. Local contrast. And focus. And you can tell with this image, the focus actually seems to work quite well. Sometimes focus is, is a real disaster. There are also control points, which you can add any point you want. Control the size of the control point. Look at the mask. Clicking here. And Alt, click and drag to copy the control points. So the control points have a drop down where you can get a replica of all the controls in the creative sharpening. You can also control the size like that. Pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive once you get used to it. You can also save these as presets and that can be that can be useful if you do a lot of editing here. Let's go ahead and switch these off. And let me just crank up the sharpening so you can see what we're talking about here. But you want to use your judgment. You really want to use your judgment when it comes to sharpening. Once you're happy with the 
basic sharpening, you can hit OK. And then you can add a second round of sharpening using the same filter. And in that second round, you might want to choose your output device. So if I were to go up here, we can choose inkjet and it gives us the settings that would work well for an inkjet printer for different distances, different types of paper, printer resolution, and you can choose other types of printer here as well. So it helps you along to make a decision as to how much sharpening you need for your final destination. And like I say, you can do this in two passes. You can add the effect once it will come through as a smart filter and you can go ahead and add it again for the sharpening for your output media. Now, what I want to really emphasize is that I'm not giving you a set of rules. I'm just giving you some kind of idea of the decision making you might want to go through when deciding how to sharpen an image. You can sharpen in camera raw. You can sharpen in the raw pre sharpener. You can use the creative sharpening inside of the output sharpening, or you can use that for final output media sharpening. So it's really about you making decisions as to what works best for your images and your camera. And at any time you can double click, go back into light, into camera raw and use the features inside of camera raw to give you an awesome result. This guy is looking 10 times sexier than when we began. Just look at that. That is amazing.